does the H2D put out the highest print quality on the market? And is it worth the $2,200 price tag for the H2D combo? Well, in this video, we're gonna be looking at the print quality that I've been getting off the H2D since owning it. We're gonna be looking at materials such as ASA, TPU, a uh, combination of materials like PTG High Flow and TPU. So if you guys are interested in seeing the results I've gotten so far, stay tuned. All right, guys, here's a sneak peek at all the prints we're gonna be checking out in today's video. I printed over 14 prints for this video. So if you guys don't mind, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification icon so you guys are notified when my next video drops. And drop a comment with what you would like to see in the next video. All right, let's get to it. Now, one more thing I want to mention as well is that I did invest in the uh, calibration plate for the printer, and I did run this calibration plate before all of these prints. I wanted you guys to know that. First things first, I think we should start off with the classic, the Benchy. So as you can see, this Benchy is super, super clean. I mean, this is exactly what you'd expect from a machine like the H2D. The, the whole of the Benchy has some small artifacting on it, but I mean, it might not be the cleanest Benchy I've ever seen, uh, but it's pretty, it's pretty dang good, so. Up next, we got the Multicolored Panda also included internally on the H2D. And as you can see, this thing printed perfectly, almost flawless. Uh, first layer was perfect. All the joints worked really, really well. And you can see there's a small little artifact right there in the eye. But other than that, basically a perfect print. Very, very nice model. Up next, we got the Multi-Material Paw. This is a TPU and PLA multi-material model. And this thing came out freaking awesome. So it's got a really nice top surface of TPU. Uh, the PLA came out super solid. The printer did an awesome job of meshing the infill of the PLA and the TPU. And that's how it kind of joins, you know, these bodies together to kind of create one part. But overall, super clean print once again. Up next, we have a, another multi-material print. This is actually PETG and 95A TPU. And as you can see, this one came out super clean as well. I mean, the PETG and the TPU doesn't stick that well to each other, unfortunately. I didn't play around with the settings that much, so it's possible that I could have got a better result if I increased the temperatures of one or the other uh, materials. But I mean, look how cool it is, guys. A stiff material combined with a soft material, all in one print. Very, very clean. Up next, we're gonna compare the Tesla charging adapters printed on the X1 Carbon and on the H2D. So let's we'll start with the X1 Carbon. Super clean print, as expected. Uh, there are some small artifacts on the outer surface of the print, and you can see, hopefully you can spot that. There is also some VFAs as well, and that's present because of the belts and you know the motor vibrations on the X1 Carbon. And I wanted to point that out because when we compare this to the H2D, uh, I think you guys are going to really like the result that we got. So over here on the H2D print, there are like no VFAs. I mean, seriously, there's hardly any VFAs, if any at all, on this surface. I mean, look how nice that outer surface is. Super, super clean. This is PTG High Flow printed on the H2D. Perfect first layer. Uh, top layer could be better, but I mean, overall, amazing print. Definitely something that I can sell online and be proud of. Okay, up next, let's take a look at some TPU prints. So this is a TPU print right here. This is my golf ball holder and tee holder that I sell online. And, you know, it looks pretty good. The There are some, there are definitely some artifacts here, and that's most likely a result of moisture in the filament. Um, but you can see that's the first layer, looks perfect. Top layer is okay, it's decent, could be better. Um, but overall, not bad, but definitely not good enough to sell online, so. And this was my third attempt. This was after drying the TPU, and I got a much, much better result. It still had a little bit of moisture left, but you can see that's the top layer, looks much better. Bottom surface is perfect. 
And yeah, this is good enough to sell online for sure. Now up next, I want to talk about this one a little bit because this was out of all of the prints so far, this was the only print that had a tiny, tiny bit of warping. As you can see right there, the layers kind of smushed together. Now I didn't use any glue. This was printed on the smooth PI sheet, as you can see. Um, but this is just matte PLA. So I thought that was kind of interesting that this stuff warped off the sheet, you know, probably a fluke, not gonna happen often. I can tell you I've already printed, you know, a few plates, uh, bas basically a whole plate full of these prints and I had pretty good results, uh, but I wanted to share that with you. So the HDD is not immune to warping. Up next, how about we take a look at some tolerance prints printed out on the H2D and then also the X1 Carbon. So you can see I got kind of greedy and I printed out some of these with uh, multicolor as well as single color just to give the H2D its, you know, the best chance possible. But let's go ahead and go over the first one. So this was the first attempt. I think towards the end, this one actually popped off the plate. I was using the smooth PEI sheet again. Uh, it seems like I just need to use glue. They ended up popping off and kind of just ruining the top surface layers. So I reprinted it. This time I did the colors backwards. And you can see that 35 moves just fine. 30 moves, 25 moves, 20 moves. 15 is also moving, but it's pretty stiff. And then 10 is seized and, and doesn't move. Now I thought, okay, you know, this is a multicolor tolerance test. You know, maybe I should print this out in single color and see if the HDD can pass a single color tolerance print. So over here, we've got the single color. So let's go ahead and go through it. So 35 works, 30, 25, 20, 15. As you can see, it's really tight, very similar to multicolor. And then 10 is seized again. Now I will say these two prints were printed at the same time, you know, on the same job, right? So obviously the nozzles were switching to print this one. Uh, even though this one's a single color, there was nozzle switching happening. So, you know, maybe I should redo this test again and see if it can print a single color by itself with no nozzle switching. And uh, if it'll pass the 0.1 millimeter tolerance test. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Now let's compare this to the X1 Carbon. So this one managed to pass all the way down to 10. And when I first took this off the plate, you know, this was a little tight, but I was able to break it free pretty easily. And yeah, I mean, the X1 Carbon was able to pass the 0.10, which I think is really interesting. I mean, yeah, I don't know what to think, guys. Uh, I think the HTD should definitely be able to, you know, at least match the X1 Carbon in a test like this. So I was a bit surprised and honestly disappointed that it wasn't able to hit that 0.1 uh, mark. But yeah, those are the results. And up next, we've got some tolerance prints that I quickly modeled in SolidWorks because I wanted to check out the dimensional accuracy of the printer. So let me grab my calipers over here and we'll get started with this. So these were all printed on the same job. They are two different materials. The orange is PLA and the yellow is PTG high flow. And overall, the prints are very, very clean, as you can see. So we should be able to get some really, really good uh, dimensions off of these. So the square is 20 millimeters square. Uh, the circles has a 20 millimeter diameter. So let's go ahead and see how the PTG performed. So as you can see, we're getting around 19.8283. Yeah, right around 19.83. Next one, pretty similar, 19.83. And the last one, 19.82. So very, very similar. We're talking a deviation of 0 0.01 on this diameter. Now let's go ahead and check the square. So 19.9 and 19, almost 20. So that's because of the seam, right? The seam is right on that corner. I don't know if you can spot it, but that's what's giving it that extra 0.1 millimeters. So 19.9 and almost 20. We've got 19.91 and almost 20. Almost 20 and 19.9. Very consistent though so far. Now, how about we measure the inside? So I believe these are modeled at 10. And you can see we're getting 19.99 there. 10 on the dot, 10.01, and then 10.01 once again. So very, very good. I mean, I'm very happy with those results. Now let's check the PLA and see if we can got similar results. I mean, overall, it looks like the PTG high flow 
is a little bit more dimensionally accurate. I also modeled these squares to be 0.1 millimeters smaller than these interior squares. And as you can see, they fit perfectly. There's hardly any wiggle room between those, between that fit. Very, very nice fit. And that goes for all three of them. So overall, pretty dimensionally accurate, very consistent. Uh, I think the PTG material is better than the PLA. I think this shows that this machine is capable of some pretty tight tolerances for the prints. All right, up next we got some PTG High Flow and some ASA. As you can see, these are both the center spool desiccant holders that I've designed. And right off the bat, I can tell you that the ASA one actually came out better, but I do think it's because the PTG High Flow had some moisture in the filament left over and needed to be dried. But for the ASA, you can see that's how that surface looks. Some small amount of artifacting there on the seam, but first layer was perfectly flat. There was zero warping whatsoever. Came out really good. This is the top area, the threads you can see real good. Top cap pattern came out really, really good. There's that outer surface. There's the inside area for the desiccant and threads together really well. This thing fits almost any spool, so it's a pretty cool design. Let me know if you guys want me to include this in one of my descriptions. And then PTG, pretty similar. This pattern came out really clean. First surfaces didn't come out as clean as the ASA. And also, it doesn't thread as good as the ASA. And that's because you can look at the threads there. It's got a lot of artifacting. But you know, that's just kind of, this is par for the course with PTG in my experience. I think if I dried it, I might have gotten a little bit better of a result. I do think this outer surface on the cap looks better though. And that's the outer surface on the outside, looks good. I don't see any VFAs. I do see a small amount of Z-wobble or banding, and that's most likely a result of the ball screws that are still being used on these Quark Y printers. Um, but it could also be the threads on the inside. It kind of looks like it's following that pattern overall. Really clean. And here is the multicolor torture toaster that I printed. And this one came out, it looks awesome. I mean, I love the colors that I picked. Uh, the dovetail that came out, printed really good. Slides in there, perfect. These gears work awesome. Here's the overhang performance on this test with PLA. 60 still looks perfect. 70 and 80 are where it gets kind of iffy with those overhangs. And then, as you can see, I'm missing the 0.5 because that was the only one that uh, would move and the other ones are seized in place, so. And then unfortunately, the handle broke off and this toast had some serious layer shifting happening. I'm not sure what happened, but the other side was perfect. So kind of kind of strange. <laughs> you can see it sticking out. But check out the outer surface. I mean, it looks really, really good. You can see it kind of like there's a little bit of Z shift or like shifting happening in the layers. I don't know if you guys are spotting that, but that's the only thing that I can see that would improve the outer surface quality at this point, because there's no VFAs anywhere on this surface. So yeah. All right guys, so I actually wanted to come back uh, a few days later and see how the torture toaster performed if it was print out of, printed out of uh, one material in one shot, no nozzle changing or color changing. And this is printed out of PTG High Flow from Bamboo Labs. And as you just saw, the toast works. So, works as expected. As you can see, if we unlock this guy, the gears work as well. Um, tolerances up to 0.4 move. The 0.3 still doesn't move, and obviously the other ones don't as well. So that's kind of a bu bummer. That's the 
overhang performance of PETG on this printer. Once again, usable up to 60 degrees. 70 degrees is where it starts to kind of get a little iffy, and then 80 degrees is just unusable. And you can see there's some artifacting right here and above the holes. It looks like that's just because it's PETG, and as you may or may not know, PETG is a very stringy, globby, oozy material, so it doesn't always produce the best prints. Let's close that up. Look at the outer surface contour of the toaster. And I think it looks really clean for PTG standards. Toasts look pretty good. You can see all the stringing in there. And as I've said before, you know, this material could have been dried. Maybe I would have gotten a slightly better result, but I mean, overall, it's not bad. Dovetail pops off, snaps together, and goes on as expected. It doesn't go all the way down though, so. So yeah, that's the uh, torture toaster printed out of PTG High Flow. So what do you guys think? Is the HGD the best printer on the market and is it worth 2,200 bucks? Uh, my opinion, I think that this printer is gonna get better over time. My x men Carbon, when I first bought it, honestly had tons of problems and I thought that my Prusa MK3S Plus was putting out higher quality than the x men Carbon. Uh, over time, with firmware updates, the printer got better. So I think that we're gonna see a similar situation with the HGD. Now, speaking to that point, I do want to mention that some of these prints were printed on my high flow nozzles uh, that I bought alongside the printer. And I've noticed that there actually is a small amount of under extrusion with the high flow nozzles compared to the standard nozzles. So that's another thing that I think Bamboo is going to have to tune in a little bit better to get the high flow nozzles performing the way that you know I would like to see. I do also want to say that so far I've been very, very happy with the printer. And as you can see, I've got it set up now where I've got two AMSs hooked up to the printer, so one AMS per nozzle, and it's just been extremely convenient. Uh, everything's worked flawlessly. I absolutely love the AMSs and all the improvements they've put on those units. So yeah, those are some closing thoughts for the HTD. All right, y'all, that's gonna do it for my video today. Um, I'm curious to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Do you think that I got good enough results to justify the $2,200 price tag? Or do you think that these results should be better for the price? Um, let me know in the comments below. Like, comment, and subscribe if you guys wanna see more videos like this. I'll see you in the next vid. Peace.